Hello everybody and uh, welcome to Organius Puzzle Box. Now I know some of you want a really nice sky for Unreal Engine and not a lot of you can, not everybody can afford something like Ultra Dynamic Sky or my Atmos Forge or Cloud Forge or whatever. So Unreal Engine 5.5 came out with a pretty nice cloud shader for people and I wanted to show you guys how you can get this particular cloud shader and bring it into your Unreal Engine 5.3 5.2, 5.4, it doesn't really matter. The project will be available on my Patreon page for anybody to download for free. If you'd like, I mean, this is uh, Epic's work anyway, so I'm just sharing it with you guys. It's going to be available for 5.3 if you want to use it from there. But if you watch the tutorial, you will understand how we uh, ported this particular shader, this cloud layer, into a, a lower version of Unreal Engine 5, since this is running in 5.5 instead of 5.3 or 5.4 or anything like that. We're also going to go down on uh, improving the performance and improving the quality of the clouds by adding some console commands that will greatly improve the rendering method of these clouds. So if you like what you're seeing and if you'd like to know how we can achieve this, then stay tuned for this video. Please leave a like, comment and subscribe and let's begin. So unless you're using Unreal Engine 5.5 and let's say you're using Unreal Engine 5.3 or 5.4, the best way for us to get a better looking volumetric cloud uh, that's, you know, comes default with Unreal Engine is for us to use Unreal Engine 5.5 and get the material from that first. So I've created this um, empty project in Unreal Engine 5.5 so I can actually give you guys the material that we need in order to have our beautiful new cloud system that comes with 5.5. So I'm just going to add a volumetric cloud into the scene and once this loads we can see it here. This is the new material. So we want to bring this over in 5.3 and 5.4 uh, or you know any earlier uh, version of this as well. So I'm going to like double click this material here and this will open the actual material uh, instance of the clouds. We're not interested in any of the options just yet. We are actually interested inside the uh, material itself, in the hierarchy, this whole thing here. Now, there aren't any particularities about this. What we really need from here is the entire, you know, the entire setup to copy it. Um, and I'm just trying to look to see if there's any sort of like um, uh, material functions in here or anything like that. And there aren't really any of it apart from some reroute nodes and textures and things like that. So we will need some textures, which we are able to export out of here um, on, you know, based on how we, you know, if we need it or not. So I'm just going to make sure that these all these are available to you without having to download Unreal Engine 5.5 if you don't want to. So I'm going to like select all of this and I'm going to copy it so that we can use it in our own Unreal Engine project. So with all selected, I'm going to press Control C. Just make sure that when you copy, you actually select everything, including the material node itself. So I'm going to press Control C. And then I'm going to go to this website, which is called blueprintui.com, which basically allows us to create uh, blueprints for Unreal Engine, like material shaders and things like that. So over here, I'm going to call this volumetric cloud um, 5.5. And then I'm going to leave it as public. And I'm going to put this over to 5.3. We're going to do a 5.3 version. Then over in here, I'm going to paste the code that we copied from Unreal Engine. And then I'm going to press the button, create your blueprint. So this has now created a blueprint for Unreal Engine 5.3. And if we control zoom out, you'll notice that we now have all of this in here. Okay, now we're going to open a project in Unreal Engine 5.3 so we can actually copy this paste over there so we can use the new material shader. Okay, I'm going to name my project um, volumetric cloud and just leave it at that. And then I'm going to press the create button because we don't need any starter content or anything like that, okay? So once we have it, I can select all of this as well and right click or actually just control C just to copy or over here. Actually, when you see code to copy, you can just click that button over there and control C. And that's now we've got all the, the entire blueprint copied and I am going to go into my project, which is now in Unreal Engine 5.3 like that. And I am going to delete the sky sphere and I am going to add a volumetric uh, cloud so just like that into the scene and then I'm going to double click its material over here uh, just to make sure that we open it actually we don't need this one what we need to do is instead press this um, a button over here to take our content browser over to this material and then I'm going to duplicate this particular material and I'm going to call it uh, volumetric well actually M VM 5.3 five something like that okay 
and I'm going to open it by double clicking. I'm going to put it up here. And then inside, we do want to delete everything. Um, and then we can control V. And that will bring that entire material that we just made earlier, right? Or we could have created a new material from scratch. It doesn't really matter, okay? But we could just do it this way, like that. And now we need to connect these uh, points very quickly. So this one, I think, is going to go into albedo. Well, this one is going to go into the emissive. And this one, I believe, goes into the extinction. But it's always best to check. So we're going to alt-tab back into the old project and have a look. It seems that the this one goes into ambient occlusion. Oh, right. This is... <laughs> So this is actually emissive, this is albedo, uh, this is going to be ambient occlusion, and then we have one somewhere over here, over here from the saturate, that's going to be our extinction. So I'm going to drag that into here, like that. Okay, so now we have it. Um, but we are getting all these errors, and that's because we haven't yet, um, you know, we haven't yet sorted out the uh, textures themselves we do need to work out what um, what textures are missing. So if we double click, you can, you'll notice that there's a texture in here missing. And then there's another one right here. So we need to go back into um, this version, okay? And have a look at what textures are missing. So we know um, that we're missing this one. So it's VT lighting. And then we're missing this one, which is another vt lighting was the same texture twice okay so actually interestingly enough we can we can click this button over here as well for unreal engine 5.5 and you'll notice that these are the materials that we need we actually need this one this one this one so these are all materials that we will need so i'm just going to select uh probably all of these textures from here just because it's easier that way i think so we take all these textures, maybe even this one. Actually, I think Unreal Engine has this one already. Yeah, I think these are the good the textures to take. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go over here in Asset Actions and I'm going to say Bulk Export. And we can actually put these into, I'm going to put them into Downloads, just make a new folder, VM Textures, and I'm going to select the folder. And now the uh, engine has already exported them. I'm going to go back into my usual engine, which is this one here. And I'm going to open a Explorer file, Explorer window, and then I'm going to go in Downloads, VM Textures, and just go all the way in here where I can see these textures. And now I'm going to drag them in. Now they're all imported very nicely. Um, now we can take this particular one and add it over into this sample, this material, and then over here into this material. So that, it fixes that problem. And then we have some other things where it says this texture defines the world location, blah, blah, blah. So this one has a problem as well. So we need to go back into Unreal Engine um, 5.4, 5.5, sorry, and have a look. This texture needs to be this cloud pattern. So we're going to go back into here and make sure that we drop the cloud pattern. There we go. That fixes that problem. And then we have all of these here. There's three of them. So back to our... Um, project and we can see in the first one we need this particular cloud mask and then the second one we need a profile 8 and this last one is a pearl a perlin worldly balance which we already have so in here i'm going to drop the cloud mask over here i'm going to drop this profile 8 as they call it and then in here i need to drop in a um perlin oh are you serious i don't have one. Oh, that's that's too bad um, okay, well, that's fine. We are just going to have to go in here and export this as well. Um, so asset action, export. Okay, we're going to do it in the same place. That's fine. Um, now we're going to go back to our this this uh, one here. And I'm going to click right click and press on the import button. I'm going to now find the VM textures. And this is the Perlin Whirlin. Perlin Whirlin. Right, Perlin Whirly balanced. Okay, that should be it. Okay, now I'm going to go back into my main level here and I will be dragging the new uh, cloud, but I'm going to right click it and create a material instance. With this done, I can now drag it in here and now look at that. We have the new clouds in place. Okay, 
Now, these clouds do need some changes, you know, done, obviously. So we're going to double click the material instance and I'm going to bring it somewhere around here just so we can have a look at it like that. Uh, back to our main file in here. And now I'm going to play around with some of these settings in order to get them to look better. And we're going to go to the next level, which is basically playing around with some console commands. And guys, do remember that if you do support the, if you want to support the, the, the platform, you can do so on Patreon where you get access to all of my projects that I have for sale. So just for one subscription, you basically get everything. And also you can go to my website, 3D Project Masters or my Unreal Engine uh, Marketplace and purchase any of my projects if you'd like to support the channel. But let's get back to the tutorial. Now for us to get some uh, really, really nice sort of uh, setups done here, we would like to, you know, play around with maybe the scale or something like that, just to, just to push it a bit further. Now we also have like a global coverage, so we could probably do something like that just to give them a bit more coverage. Um, then I'm going to also enable storm clouds because I think these are these are really cool just to get those up in, you know, up in there. <laughs> So to speak and now i'm gonna have a look at the noise so we're gonna say yes use noise free this is gonna take a bit of time for the uh, shaders to prepare um but this is going to make this look even a little bit well potentially a bit better just let me just reduce some of these um storm clouds maybe something like that um yeah i think something like that should be fine Okay, now another thing that we can do is we can play around with the settings of the actual clouds themselves. So over in here, when we have the cloud selected, we can actually decrease or increase the height or um, the, the bottom or the height. This error comes from the um, phase eight sort of system as well. So you might want to reduce that. That's that's within the, that's a problem that comes with the Unreal Engine cloud system for 5.5. So it's a bit of an unfortunate thing, but you can you can actually easily get rid of that uh, by just playing around a little bit with the settings over in here we have tracing max distance i'm going to increase this to the maximum so we can see the clouds from further and further away and now over in here we have use per sample um uh, light transmittance so i'm going to um, enable that as well i'm also going to enable these options you know push them a little bit just to get a bit more uh, detail in there something like that and the clouds are already looking a lot uh, better and now back into our material in here we will need to as i said just play around with a bit more i'm not sure if with the scale is the right thing to do maybe something like that i'll reduce the coverage but i will inc increase the storm clouds let me just move the directional light uh, a little bit as well you can see now that even at um, at, the, at the dawn or sunset, you get better sort of lighting when the sun moves around. So that's pretty cool. Um, let me just remove noise free for now, just to see if we actually get a better result with that removed. Yeah, I think without noise free is probably a little bit better. But I really like how these files look like. They're really cool. Well, I probably would need to lift them up a bit more from the ground. Maybe they're just a bit too close to the ground. Maybe something like that. Okay, so that that's pretty cool. I mean, I think these clouds look so much better than the uh, usual clouds that you normally have. That's pretty. That's really good, isn't it? Right. Okay. So with that done, let's now play around with the with the console commands to improve the quality of these clouds and how they look like okay so for our first console command i am going to use the aerial perspective so i'm going to go down here into the console commands where you see down here and i'm going to control v this particular console command so it's r dot volumetric cloud dot high quality aerial perspective and space two I'm going to press enter on that one and that's going to improve it. Now, if we go back into here and put that to zero, you'll notice right at the back there that something changes. OK, now this is going to not going to matter too much right now. I mean, you're not going to really be able to tell why this is improved, but trust me, it has. Also, let's actually show the FPS so you can like sort of like uh, see the difference in FPS when we change these things so aerial perspective doesn't really have much of a much of an impact here but in, in terms of actual performance so just leave that on now the next one is going to be our, the volumetric render targets so i'm going to 
paste our volumetric render target to zero. I'm gonna press enter. You can now notice pretty much that our performance has dr dramatically dropped, but the sharpness of the clouds has improved quite a lot. So I wouldn't recommend using this console command unless you're doing cinematics. But if you put it back to one, uh, back to one, you should get your performance back. So remember the this is the console command. Our volumetric render target zero. If you want for cinematics, then you can use this console command in order to get this to run quite nicely. And the clouds are going to be so much more defined. Now, the next one is about a LUT. So I'm going to paste r.skymosphere.fastsky LUT zero. So that's also going to improve the way our um, sort of like our um, system is going to look but you're not going to really be able to tell much unless you like go really high up into the clouds themselves so i would advise that you have a fly around and be able to then check and see how the quality of these clouds changes so as i said it's very important that you play around with these settings um just to, just so you can you can see the difference um the next and final console command is going to be an aerial perspective um, which is going to, again, for a lot, which is going to come into play with the other one that we just added. So this is the one here, r.skyatmosphere.aerialperspectivelot.fastapply on a pack, a pack. So I'm going to put that to zero as well. Okay, so this, all of this won't really do much unless you set up that render target to zero, but I wouldn't recommend doing it unless you're doing a cinematic. Uh, right now, this is how it would look like with a one, um this is sorry this is how it looks like with a zero okay now by some of these some of these settings may by uh default be set to higher quality especially since we already played around with a sky with a volumetric cloud in here when we change these settings but if you tone these down back to i don't know what they were before we made the changes you know something like that this is how bad these clouds used to look um if you then start you can have a look and see you know how they look like without these um settings so you know we could you can see there in the background as well how the sky changes a little bit um we can also you know have a look at the volumetric render target set that to um sorry not to one set it to zero so that will improve our render quality of the clouds but because we've disabled all of these you're not really seeing that much benefit but at least it runs okay now with the render target set to zero and then you can have a look in here at the aerial perspective so this is with a zero and this is with a two i recommend putting this as zero and as i said the render target to a one to a zero as well uh, everybody everything pretty much has to be set to zero in order to get a higher quality and this can be found in the uh, documentation for unreal engine volumetric clouds as well which i will link in the description below just so you can have a read further away but hope you guys enjoyed the video hope you learned something about volumetric clouds and how to import a better shader for your unreal engine 5.3 or 5.4 even 5.2 and 5.1 will function with this quite easily so i showed you a method hope you enjoyed it i'll see you guys in the next one thank you